This is Catching Up with the Corn Dogs. I'm Andrew Mild. And in this episode, I get to sit down with the owner of the club, Ralph Flores, and I ask him about the upcoming season with something he has in plan. And he also has a message for you fans at the end. So listen to that. And we have an update on memorabilia and uniforms for the corn dog fans. And with that, let's meet Ralph Flores. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Catching Up with the Corn Dogs. I'm Andrew Mild, and joining me on this one is the owner, Ralph Flores. We've been trying to do this twice now, and it's third time's a charm, I guess. Uh, Ralph, how you doing? I'm doing well. I'm glad I was able to get my video working for this Zoom. I think we finally figured out the problem. Uh, you know, Samantha, Tall Cider, I think, figured it out for us, and now I'm good to go. So. That's the thing about technology. You can't live with it, and you can't live without it. And, Absolutely. Uh, sometimes I'm it's a bit tech, simplest... I am a bit tech, uh, technologically challenged, so uh, yeah, I was yeah, glad that... to have Samantha with uh, with those possible remedies to help me out. So, yeah, my my dad usually does all the things for me. So let's jump into the baseball aspect. So that's why we're here. So the team has announced that you're going to be the Lake County Corn Dogs, as you can obviously see from behind me. How happy were you with the responses you were getting from the fans with the team name the tank at Name the team contest. Uh, I was very happy with the response. It was uh, quite a few folks that really thought the name was fun and entertaining and uh, something different. So we had quite a few responses from folks that were really happy with it. And then, of course, you have those that, that weren't. And uh, what we did, I think, is a little bit different is that instead of uh, just letting it go, we went out and re reached out to those folks that uh, thought that wasn't uh, a good name for the team and had some conversations and we got some some positive feedback from those folks and actually some of those folks are now some of our biggest fans so we've uh, it actually worked out real well because we had a lot of discussion around the name once it was announced yeah that was a fun call that we had after the the name was announced and you told me he's like hey just kill them with kindness if they don't like it reach out <laughs> to them kill them with kindness and it's worked it's a great model to live by and I can't wait to see those people come out to the games and, and get to meet you in person for the first time. Oh, absolutely. It'll be fun. And speaking about people from Lake County that you may, may know may not like the name and want to come out now, what made you want to bring a team to Lake County? It's something I had uh, wanted to do for a number of years. I was in sport in the sports marketing field for, for about 12 years and I'd been out of it for, about 14 years now, and I knew one day I was going to get back in. It's, it's a passion that I have. And uh, so as I was uh, searching for opportunities, to get back into the sports marketing uh, field, uh, I watched a lot of summer collegiate baseball and started to develop a relationship with Don Popovic, who is the owner of the Northern League and also the owner of the uh, Northwest Indiana oil men. And we, we had some discussions for the last two years about uh, finding a location for, for me to have a, a franchise. And we actually looked at a couple different, you know, towns and uh, as well as uh, with uh, Crown Point and um, being Crown Point made a lot of sense. Uh, for one, uh, Mary Uran and his team there in Crown Point have a lot of resources, uh, for youth sports and amateur sports, as you see, there's the facilities in town are tremendous. Uh, youth leagues in all different sports is, is going up. So if uh, it was just a great place and the, and the community is, is growing, I think it's the largest growing community in Northwest Indiana. So it just was uh, the right place to, to do something like this. And, and it's been uh, well received by the community. Yeah, and another person that I would love to give a shout out to for the great facilities was the late great Dean White, who poured a lot of money into the community before he he passed away around four years ago. So that's why everything's called Legacy Fields. For those who don't don't know, it's the legacy of Dean White. And, and this I never told you this, Ralph, but the first time I ever heard about a team eventually coming to Crown Point was I got a call from my grandfather. And I was actually at a Cleveland Indians game against the Reds and Zach Plezak was pitching. If that was a sign for things to come. 
And you <laughs> actually just met Zach Plezak about a week ago. How was that experience like? That was awesome. He, uh, he had a, a signing, uh, autograph signing over at, off, the, off the Square Brewery. And uh, saw it online. I'm like, you know, I'm going to head over there and uh, spend some money, get a, some autographs and photos. And uh, we're actually going to display that, that jersey at our, at our field. And uh, so I had the opportunity to, uh, we're going to frame that jersey and, and display it. And I had the opportunity to meet him. And, and you know, he's a, very, he's a very busy guy. I'm sure he's uh, working out, getting ready for the upcoming uh, spring training, if it ever happens. Uh, so I'm sure he's very busy. But when I had the opportunity to get the photo op with, with him, uh, I said, hey, just want to let you know that we, uh, this hasn't been announced yet, but it's, uh, it's appropriate uh, that we, we believe uh, your your brother is going to be signing with us. He's like, are you kidding me? I goes, I didn't. That's the first I've heard of it. I said, yeah, he's most likely going to be uh, signing with us. He said, that's awesome. So he's uh, he's already a corn dog fan. Yeah, F- Frankie Plezak, his youngest brother. Let me ask you this: Was the jersey? Is it the Cleveland Indians or is it the Guardians? It's the Guardians. Oh, I see. I haven't seen their jerseys yet, so I'm excited yeah. to see that when it gets, gets displayed. Right. So it's the Guardians jersey. I think that's a good good uh, fit tr- transition from, you know, the Indians changed their name, so they had to go through a name change. We got to pick our name recently. So for you, what was it like to create a baseball team from the ground up? It's been amazing. It's actually been, a you know, kind of a dream come true. Like I said, I've, I'm a you know, sports fan my entire life. I, I played collegiate baseball myself, uh, two or three sports in high school. So sports has always been a – huge part of my life and uh, something I, I truly enjoy being involved in. So putting a team together and getting s- some great people around me, uh, I can't do this alone. And the team that we put together is amazing. You know, with Samantha and Alex and yourself and Tom and we have some minority owners as well. It's just, the team is amazing. And I, and we've, we've assembled that uh, front office, uh, we're, I think we're going to be just as strong as what you're going to see on the field as well. So. He also brought in some pretty impressive coaches with Justin Heisman, who's who managed in the league before with the oil men, one of the, the league championship. Then you brought in Bobby Morris, who's the director of player acquisition and development, which I had to memorize that or I was going to get it wrong at some point. Um, so how excited were you to get a manager like Justin Heisman that's been managing for once a long time, and is a former champion in this league. Yeah, before I get to Justin, we also have our assistant coach. His name is Kyle Hallberg. He's the, uh, the pitching coach over at South Suburban College, and he's going to bring a lot to us as well. So we're pretty excited about Kyle. Uh, for Justin, you know, to, to be able to have a manager uh, the first year of, of our franchise exist, existence with his pedigree, you know, in his playing days, he's played at every level. Uh, he pitched in the majors, uh, so he's got experience uh, as a player. He spent uh, 13 years as a head coach in, in the, at the college level, coached in, the, in our league, won the league his very first year he was, he was a coach. So talk about checking every box. And then you sit down, all you have to do is spend five minutes with the man and realize what kind of character he has. Uh, he's a good family man and have someone like that leading our team is, is pretty amazing. Yeah. And you talk about families. It's funny. I went on his Twitter the other day and stumbled upon this link to an old night game from the nineties. Uh, it was Ole Miss and Mississippi state. And Justin was playing third base that night and was batting fifth. And it, it was funny because it said J U next to his name. And you never usually see that usually just the right. first initial. Well, they had to do it because the two hitters in front of them were his brothers. <laughs> that's awesome jason and josh heisman play on the same team his one brother was a shortstop playing right next to him and the other one played first base so on wow. top he's been, he played baseball with his family in d1 his brother got drafted by the dodgers and then he got drafted as a pitcher to the rockies and you know family is a big thing with baseball oh, absolutely and for us, you've hit it hard since we started. This is going to be a community builder. This is supposed to be for the families in the area. So how do you think you're going to be able to bring in these families and 
established a solid fan base in your first year? First and foremost, we're going to make it affordable families to come uh, and we're going to provide an environment that's family friendly. We hope to, uh, we're working on a, a kid zone uh, where we various things that the kids will be able to do during the game. Uh, you know, oftentimes, uh, you know, they can't sit uh, for a couple hours, two, three hours in, in one seat uh, and, and, you know, without uh, being ants in your pants and want to run around. So we're <laughs> going to provide some, some opportunities for them to interact with some, some games and maybe jumpies and things of that nature. So we're going to have that uh, available for the, for the children. And then uh, also if uh, any parent uh, wants to partake in a, in a, in a, hot dog or a corn dog, you know, we'll have a, we'll have a full concession stand. And, and lastly, if uh, they need to quench that or quench their thirst, we'll have a, a beer garden as well. Maybe you can have a, you know, a beer or, or, or soda. So it's, it's going to be a, it's going to be a great environment and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. You know what I always loved about working in baseball or being at baseball games was always watching the little kids that would actually sit down and then, you know, fall in love with the game as they're there. So right. I'm curious to ask you, what made you fall in love with baseball? Uh, I fell in love with sports in general. Uh, one of the very first pictures uh, I have after I was born, born uh, my parents uh, propped me up. I couldn't even keep my head up. I don't know how they did it, but they propped me up and they put a basketball next to me and the basketball is you know, much bigger than my head, but somehow they wrapped my arm around and, and took this photo of me kind of holding a basketball. And I, I had to be just a couple months old. And it's kind of started from there, to be honest with you. I've never not had base or some type of ball in my hand or involved in business with ball or something like that. It's just been a love that I've had for my parents. So, yeah, I always make the joke to people that when, uh, I got put into my bed for the first time after I was born that I already had a bat and the ball in that, uh, that crib with me. Right. So, so yeah, I feel what you mean. Like always been around <laughs> sports my entire life. Um, so who was your favorite player growing up? You would say, cause for me, it was Derek Lee from the Cubs. So I'm kind of, I always like asking that Ooh, question for different I'm generations. Like, <laughs> I'm, a, a, I'm a White question. Sox fan. That's why I said boo. <laughs> Uh, Derek Lee, huh? Yeah, I mean, slugging first baseman, he was always exciting, a good fielder. So you couldn't really lose out on it. And I no. always like asking this question because you always get different answers for different generations. Right. And you can kind of bond over that. Yeah. So, like, my dad's favorite player, he said, was Frank Thomas. He loved Frank Thomas, but even though he was a Cub fan. but yeah. Exactly. So I'm about a generation older than your dad, I believe. So my – I have two favorite players. They are Harold Baines and Carlton Fisk. Oh, okay. Because uh, I was a big, big White Sox fan. I still call it Comiskey Park. Uh, and uh, it'll always be Comiskey. Me and most of you guys, uh, I, love, I love watching them play. See, that's another generational thing for Southsiders is that White Sox Stadium seemed to only change their name after a generation. So... For you guys, it's going to be Comiskey. For mine, it's going to be U.S. Cellular. Right. And then the next one's going to be Guaranteed Rate. Exactly. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's interesting. And um, we'll see what comes next for the White Sox after this next generation uh, right. goes through. What do you, so I'm, this is the first time I've asked this question, but what is your favorite baseball sense? So, like, what, 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 what do you love to smell when you walk into a baseball park? Uh, I would say fresh pop popcorn. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So you can't, uh, nice buttery popcorn. Can't have as much of that as I used to, but, uh, I would say that that's a smell that, you know, you're, you're at the ballpark when you, when you smell some, some a nice, uh, popcorn popping. So. Yeah. The Hinkle Fieldhouse is right behind me right now. Uh, even though we can't see it, of course, I'm on the, right. uh, campus of Butler University and that place, you know, it's indoors and that popcorn gets going. Oh, it, you know, it's game time. Oh, you yeah. know, it's game time. It's, it's delicious. I try to stay away from it as much as I can, but once that smell hits your nose, 
You're done for. <laughs> You're done for. I love Hinkle. I actually lived in Indy and watched many a games at Hinkle before they made this renovation where they had the wood bleachers behind the baskets up on top. And uh, it was a lot of fun. Their basketball is uh, one of the, my favorite things to watch. So. Yeah. Imagine what a uh, two final fours can do for you. Just come over to Hinkle field house and check it out. It's gorgeous now. Yeah. I mean, it's always been, it's always been, so I can't, yeah. I can't say now. So this, the rosters are in the shape up. I know I've been writing all the bios and meeting most of these guys as you'll see on catching up with the corn dogs. So you have a, some part in bringing in players. What do you look for in players besides their talents and their stats? Oh, that's an easy one. Character, character, character. Uh, that's that's going to play. That's been playing a huge part in our decision making. Uh, you know, Bobby and uh, Coach Justin and Coach Kyle, they have been actively recruiting uh, the quality players. At the end of the day, that's a discussion that we always have. What kind of character does a, does a player have? And if you you, know, you get one or two. You know, subpar character players on your team, it can really hurt the entire team and really make for a long season. So you want to, you know, want to try to do your best to get kids, uh, young men that uh, are high quality character kids. And, and I think uh, we've done a pretty good job of that as, as you've probably seen so far with a couple of the players that you've interviewed. Uh, I think you see, we have some, some really good young men. Oh yeah. Great young men coming to the team. And not only that, but they are talented at the same time. And exactly. when you can get players that have a great work ethic and a great personality, your team will go a long way during the season. And, you know, when I was working last year for an independent ball club, I watched a guy get kicked off a team, even though he, was, he had the best on base percentage on the team because he almost started a fight with the other team. And the manager said, we just can't have that for, yep three or four more months. And I, I knew that what your answer was going to be. And I'm excited. I'm glad that you actually said it. Uh, character, character, character. I feel like we need to get a t-shirt that says that. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. So how confident are you on the team so far based off the talents? Uh, I know the league very well since uh, I've, I've kind of scouted it and watched it for the last uh, decade. I think the team that we're putting on on the field is going to compete for a championship. You know, there's a lot of uh, hidden variables. Uh, some guys may uh, not be able to play because you know a coach may uh, shut them down for the summer. You know, their 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 college coach or someone may get injured and uh, you know not be able to play while he's rehabbing over the summer when he, if he gets you know minor injury or some type of injury during the spring season. But if uh, if we bring the Folk, uh, the young men to the ball club uh, here in May that we have signed, we're going to be very competitive. And uh, I, I, I believe we'll be fighting for, for that the Northern League championship. Yeah, I sure hope so. That'd be a phenomenal start uh, to, your, to your new franchise in Crown Point. And you got the right guy for it. As we mentioned, Justin Heisman, first year with the Oilmen in their first year, led them to a championship. And I remember him making a comment at the unveiling ceremony. He goes, well, I hope they don't bring another team here because I might be their manager again. <laughs> yeah, he's, he knows how to do it that first year, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, I know that a lot of the players and some of the fans have already asked me about memorabilia, and we just had a meeting about that yesterday. Is there uh, anything you would want to tell the fans about that? Absolutely. That's all in the works. You know, there's there's a lot of moving parts when you're trying to put uh, something like this together and we're trying to be thorough and everything that we do you know from signing players to hiring great talent like yourself and all the things that we're doing shocks, <laughs> so, shocks. <laughs> so so everything takes a little time and I, I know our fans we've had so many requests about memorabilia but we just want to do it right so we've had like you said we had a meeting uh yesterday just so we're we're putting out the right uh right products at the right time so just bear with us. We're going to get we're going to get some things out there with hats and T-shirts and things of that nature. And then we're going to expand into some jerseys and sweatshirts and things along those lines as, as time goes on. But we're going to start with the basics to get things going with the hats and the T-shirts. And you should see those within the next uh, 
10 to 14 days online and available for sale. Yeah, I have to say for the fans, without giving too much away, I'm very excited for these uniforms. These uniforms are awesome. Yeah. Ralph sent me like a mock-up and they're amazing. I can't wait for the fans to wear them and then our players to put them on. The hats are going to be, you know, they're going to be fun and creative because it's it's the corn dogs. You have to be when you have a team name like this. Oh, absolutely. So that's all I have for you, Ralph. Uh, is there anything you would want to tell the fans beyond the memorabilia or uh, some small thing about the upcoming season? Yeah, we're just, you know, we, we're, we're very excited as an organization to be in, in Crown Point in South Lake County. We plan to bring affordable family fun. Uh, we hope to uh, gain even more support with the, through uh, with the community and and the and the business community. We're actively looking for uh, partnerships and sponsorship uh, partners here moving forward over the next two or three months. So if anybody would like to uh, connect with us uh, on the business side of things, feel free to contact us at you know corndogsbaseball.com. You can information off our website or you can email us at info at corndogsbaseball.com we're looking forward to a great summer and a lot of fun and he didn't write that down folks he can shoot that right off the hip (laughs) not only he's a phenomenal owner and a phenomenal boss he is a phenomenal talker so that's Uh, that's great always great to talk with you ralph and i can't and i just walked to to dinner and came back we're not dinner but lunch and came back and it's cold out there, and I'm looking at the schedule. May 23rd, the first game can't come soon enough, and May 26th, the first home game can't come soon enough. So first things first, don't forget to go on and buy your tickets for the upcoming season. We would love to have you out at Legacy Fields at Center, Pars- Center Ross Park for the first game in Corn Dogs home history. And don't forget to check out other episodes of Catching Up with the Corn Dogs on the YouTube channel and here on the Corn Dogs Baseball Dot com. For Ralph Flores, I'm Andrew Mild. We'll see you next time on Catching Up with the Corn Dogs.